side, I don't, I don't like to keep any more line than this. See, 14 inches of line outside the tip. I find that if you get this, this is great for be skipping up under a dock or something. It does a very poor job of casting something light very far with any amount of accuracy because you have to throw it so hard to get the rod to bed. And casting, just like fly casting, casting the spinner rod, it's all about physics. If we don't get this rod bending, the rod isn't going to work for us. So we're going to have to do all the work with our arm muscles instead of letting the rod be a lever and do the work for us. If I get about that much out, it gets me a good amount of distance. If I put this much out, this will help me throw it as far as, if I want to throw a bomb as far as I can, I get a lot of line out there. And I get a lot of uh, guys from uh, Britain that do surf casting or do some surf fishing from up north. And this, this is how they go around with this much line outside because they're used to putting a big sinker on and shucking that thing as far as they can. Gets you a long ways out, you're not going to ever be able to hit your target with that much line outside the tip. There's too much stuff swaying around. Bring it in here at about between 12 and 16 inches of line, so I don't put much a much longer leader than that on there. Uh, the leader knot that I have is just outside the tip now, so that wouldn't be a problem if I just had it going in the last guide or two. On my rods, I put an oversized guide, take off the, the guide that came with it, and I would see I have a big giant guide on the tip. In the summer, I might be moving up to 30 or 40 pound test fishing for snook or tarpon. And I, with that little tiny guy that comes on the tip of a lot of rods, you have to reel that knot up inside of there and it becomes a problem and ends up getting stuck. If it's 15 or 20 pounds, you're really not going to have that problem. One thing I cannot stress enough, learning to catch with two hands on the rod. I know most of you here have heard me say this before, it is the, the most common thing I see people do with casting that stops them from casting the picture. Nobody would go play golf one-handed. If I gave anybody a rifle, I don't think most people would shoot it one-handed. Two hands work better, so you use two hands. That's why they put a cork brick down here. I even had, had a guy tell me one time, he never knew why this was cork down here. He never figured it out. That's because this is where your other hand goes when you're casting. And use that grip, because it's going to help you rotate that tip of that rod route. If you're doing it all by your wrist, you can get it out, and if I'm casting the fish that are real close, yeah, I might just flick it out there. We're not trying to hit anything far away, but if you're starting to get away from the boat and you're not casting two-handed, you're just you're sacrificing your accuracy. Um, most of the time, this rod is, is not coming, the tip of this rod is not coming above my head. Never, ever, but I have the rod in this position where it's pointing straight out behind me. Think about if we're throwing a ball. And if we want to throw a ball far, and a lot of people, when they want to make a long cast, they see them do this. Now, if I give anybody in here a ball, I told you to throw it as far as you can, nobody is going to start down here and come around and go over the top and throw that ball a long ways. Bring the ball back here in a straight line and throw it out in a straight line over a long distance. If we're making a short toss to each other, we just toss it like this. So we're making a little short cast, we'll have to move that rod a little bit away. If we're making a long cast, we have to move it a longer way. But we don't start back here, so that we can come around, it comes around in a circle and down. So we either end up letting it go way up there, or down a little too late as it comes down in the water. If I'm throwing this thing as far as I can, I'm going to reach back here. This tip is going to be up, so as it comes out, I'm going out with that thing, launching it in a straight line, just like if we were throwing a ball. So, See, you know, if you see yourself doing this, you never would throw a wrap up around in the circle. I, I can't, can't think of any any time where that would be practical and efficient. But most of the time, that rod is not coming above, above my shoulder. The rod is level, and I'm casting in a straight line as I can. Because with an exposed hook, like I said before, we can't afford to let that thing get down into the grass. And if I throw with any kind of slack in my cast, so if my cast comes up at all in a circle, by the time I pull up and get that slack out of it, maybe not this shrimp because it's a little bit lighter than but certainly that lead-headed jig, that thing rockets down at the bottom and it's already down in the grass, but that, then it's too late. Because when I, as I pull it up out of the grass, that's when it's going to get the big crop of grass stuck on. So 
So I'm going to throw as straight a line as possible because I'm going to throw as close to these fish as I think I can get away with. If I had to err, most of the time I'd rather err of throwing a little too close to them than a little too far away from them. I don't care how good you cast, if you're not going out there and you're not scaring fish, if you don't cast the fish and they spook off, you're probably landing way too far away from you. Either you're hooking every single one, which I don't think anybody does that, or you're casting too far away from them. If you throw too far away from them, they don't see it, they're definitely not going to eat it. If you throw too close to them, maybe you're going to scare some, yes. But at least that bait was by them and they had a chance to eat it. So if I'm going to air, I'm going to air a little too close and a little too far away. We're going to use this orange cone as my target. That is my single fish. You know, and what we're looking for a lot in the wintertime is the tailing fish. Never, ever would I throw way down the end of this pool at a target that's that distance. By the time I reel it up to where that fish is, I've given it really much time. We land that far away from the fish. Let's see how long it takes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,002. Almost four seconds for me to get it up to where that fish was. In four seconds, especially on a fish that's moving, but in four seconds is a long time for that fish to feel the boat, hear the boat, get up, uh, come up from tailing, all of a sudden see that boat, or if it's moving, in four seconds that fish could go from one side of the pool to the other, no problem. If you're throwing that far away from it, it's way too hard to time. So I'll, I'll never throw more than 10 feet. And if there's chop on the water, I'll bring that down to five feet. If I have something lighter, or lighter or heavier bait, or I can make less of a splash, you know, I'll get pretty close to them. So if I'm, if I'm throwing that close, within one pull of the rod, I haven't closed the bail. All I did was move the rod, and that got that thing in position in a half a second. That quick. I'm up in position and get that thing in front of that fish. So instead of four seconds, I've taken a half of a second. And that, a little detail like that, makes the difference for you. Not getting that fish, not getting the bait in front of them, making it come behind them, allowing them to see you, and getting the shot that you're going to catch that fish. If I throw in the fish, the most of the fish as I go through the day that I can see in the water, this pool is 60 feet, so that thing's almost halfway down. That's 30 feet away. Most of them are much more farther than that, maybe 40 feet, 45 feet. Most of those fish are close. If I cast overhand, I either have to throw it up in an arc and it makes that plop when it comes down, then I got to get rid of the slack, or if I'm throwing it by that fish, it makes a big, a big plop as it hits, as opposed to keeping that thing low, where it makes half the amount of splash and it goes into that straight line. Something that, that I, I don't even think about that I do that a lot of people point out to me. Um, when I cast, most of the time I, I gotta give it a give it a lure once around so it'll come around and, and, and I'll, I'll throw it over a circle. What that does, if you watch the rod, is this thing comes around this way and that lure swings back and bends that rod a little bit in that direction. So when I stop, the rod was bent a little more than if I just went like this and threw it out. Now I didn't have much bend in the rod. If I give that little once around, it's kind of like if you had a, a rock on a string. Well, you took that rock and whipped around a couple of times, you sail it out, you can really get that thing sailing. So if I get a little momentum behind it, and I move that thing, it goes a lot faster. It helps me if I got a, if I got some wind to deal with. It puts a little, puts a little, uh, uh, it puts a little uh, bend in my rod. It helps me get that thing out there a lot quicker. So that's a little tip that I don't even realize that I do a lot of times. But if you're not doing that, you might want to try that. The other thing I find that's probably the most helpful to me is learning to use your index finger on that line every single cast, no matter what, what you're casting to. Every cast, just as this thing's about to hit the water, my finger goes right back to where it started, and that momentum of that lure yanks that lure yanks my line tight. Not only do I start with a tight line, so I can move it, I can get it up in position before I close the bail, because I'm always, always, always closing the bail with my hand. 
So I move that thing up, but I can take my time getting that bale closed. See in here we have a the amount of push you gotta get that little twist up there. So every single cast I do this. Now when it's slick calm, all it does is help me move it by using my finger. As soon as that wind starts to blow, if you want to use something, especially something light like this, but even on real windy days, that heavy lure. If you're throwing across the wind, and that's my target. So if my target's that red fish, I got a nice stiff wind blowing from my left and my right. And I threw out here and I let this thing sit. And I don't have my finger on there, you're gonna get another 10 feet of line that wind blows and the line will end up on the other side of that red boat over there. So now as you close your bail, not only are you reeling a whole bunch of slack before the lure ever moves, the lure ends up coming way out around here away from your target instead of right back in a straight line. The only way you're going to be able to overcome that wind is to never let the lure stop moving. So as soon as it stops going that way, I had it going back this way, it never came to a stop. That's the only way I can use something with an exposed hook in super shallow water. You know, I can use that lead head jig shallow as I can float my boat. But as soon as it stops going that way, it's coming right back this way. Then I get it up in my target zone and let it drop. There is no need for me, if I'm casting at a fish and I lure it lands down there, say I'm using the jig. And, you know, what I do with that jig is I twitch, twitch, reel, reel, pop it up and let it down. There's no need for me to do that way the heck over there where my fish is over here. But I see folks do it a lot, they throw it down here fish is there and they see that tail and they're doing this all the way up. But that fish is busy looking right there. Well, let's get it in his face as fast as we possibly can and show him the food that he's looking for. So let's get it up in his face, drop it right there in that target zone. And now if I want to move it, now I'm barely going to move it along. You can see how little bit I'm twitching that rod and watch how far that bait's moved already. I'm moving 10 feet and I'm just barely, barely twitching that rod to it. You can imagine if we got it up on our fish, we get it right in this perfect zone, and now we twitch it this far, two twitches of that rod tip, I'm 10 feet away from it. If you didn't see it now, you're never ever gonna know it's there. So once I get it there, let's make sure that it stays by and let it sink down and then just, just barely, barely move that thing only an inch or two at a time. Um, it's easy in this pool because it's crystal clear and we don't have any grass on the bottom. We have a nice dark lure. We can see that exactly where the lure is. But when we're fishing in the lagoon, especially if I had this lure, if I throw that thing out there, now there's no way I can see where that thing is. I can guess and I, I, can, I can see where my line is going in. Do I have two feet of line where, at the point where it enters the water? Is there a foot of line? Three feet, I don't know, I'm guessing. And guessing where that lure is is kind of like guessing where fish are. Most of the time you're gonna guess wrong. If we're looking for a target zone that's the size of a dinner plate and we're trying to guess, if you guess a little bit wrong, so if your lure is down there and you thought it was you know, a foot closer to him and so instead of getting it up in his path that quick, you were a little slow and that fish was moving and you end up bump attacking him with the bait or coming behind him and he doesn't even get a chance to see it. The only way I can tell where my bait is, is it's up here. Now I'm absolutely sure, 100% of the time, where it is. There's no guesswork involved whatsoever. And since I don't need to be twitching it when it's down there, because the fish can't see it anyway, why not bring it up here as path? And then I'm 100% sure that fish saw my bait. You never, on your greatest day of fishing, are you ever going to get 100% bites on a perfect cast. If I can get five bites out of 10 perfect casts, I'm really happy. If I only make, if I get 10 shots and I only make two perfect casts, and I only get 50% bites, and I only get one out of 10 instead of five out of 10. Yes, sir. Dragging your lure and tuck the water like that and scoop that fish away. Nope. What what seems what seems to bother them is that is the plot, but I don't I don't ever I don't ever have a problem with with uh, you know that this this little dragon on the top. And if it, that fish was tailing, that's how close. And I'm I'm just assuming he was facing to the right. 
this tail was pointed towards you guys. That's how close I'm going to get it. On a tailing fish, a fish that's motionless, I'm going to cast almost straight over that fish. But here's another important part. I want to keep this rod up here because if I do this, now I just whacked him with my line and his braids in the sink. And even, so if, I, well, if I'm getting it up to him and I hit him with that line before that bait gets to him, it's all over. So I cast past him, get my line up. So now I only have lure and water, and I drop it right on his nose. I can steer this thing, you know, a foot or two by doing this. So if I, my cast isn't 100% accurate, if I can steer it a foot, you know, if I need to get it on the other side of them, I can do that. But if I cast two feet to the, or three feet to the wrong side out here, now I'm never going to be able, I don't care how much reaching you do, it's never going to get over there. So if I have a stationary target, why not just cast directly over them? That way, I can decide as I'm bringing it up, which side do I need to bring it up? Which side do I want? I can always steer it one way or the other. That's, that's through a fish that's sitting still. So a tailing fish is obviously sitting still. If he's sitting still, no matter which way he's facing, I can bring it up and drop it off. If he's facing directly at me, and that tail fish will point right at me. I'll throw it right over him. I'll steer it off to the side a little bit, bring it in front of his nose, drop it around in front of his nose. That, that and, action looks more like a bait fish anyway. Yep. Yeah, so that really doesn't seem to bother him. And then if I'm not if I'm not seeing a reaction from that fish, you know, I think I can just let it sit here until he gets until he comes up and then pop it one time just like that. Just make it pop up off that bottom. That fish sees that and then watch it just explode over here towards it. So, are you gonna spook the tail of fish? Yes, but most of the time if you got tail of fish and you can get this thing in front of them, you're gonna you know, you don't you don't have to have a live shirt. If you can get this back in the in front of the tail of fish, most of the time they're gonna eat it. But it's all about being able to get that cast. And I've watched people cast 15 times at one fish sitting still and never once be able to get it that close to it. So it looks kind of easy, and it is after you do it over and over and over. But can you get? Can you make that cast nine out of ten times? Can you get it that close to that target consistently? And maybe that target's another 10, 10 feet out. And if you're fishing on on a boat with your buddy. Are you walking over here now? Can you can you throw it out backhand like that to do it? All day long today, I had two guys on the boat. And whoever the guy was on this side, his buddy standing right here all day long. I watched him do this, reaching over in his buddy's face, try to throw off off the front of the boat. When I can't do it because those rods are there, I'll have to move over a little bit. But there's no reason he couldn't uh, you can throw as far as you ever need to throw backhand in a straight lines the same cast. This or this, no difference. It's not. It's not any arm. It's not any any really different technique. It's just a little twitch that rod tip off one side or the other. But you know, it's like a lot of other things. If you don't do it, if you don't practice it. But instead of having to try to reach and suffer in front of somebody's face all day, where you can't really get much of a back cast, it'd be a lot easier to turn around and cast off the other side. And if, if we're going down. If we're going down the flat, there's just as much chance the fish are on this side. And instead of me having to take the time to turn around and cast over here, if I'm standing this way, if I can just swing the back end and cast off to them, that might save me a second or two. That might give me a bite where uh, taking that time to turn around and rock the boat or squeak my foot or something it might have made all the difference. Lots and lots of fish I catch. As I'm going along, even with my troll motor on, I catch a lot of fish that are no farther away from me than that. That's the point of view. I catch fish like that all the time. But I'm always ready. Never will you see me in fishing mode without being in this position. If I'm in this position, by the time it takes me to look down here, acquire this line, open this up, and look back up, I lost it. I couldn't begin to count the amount of times I watch people take her out and fish, and that fish just vanishes. And it blends in and it might return and change the angles a little bit. Once you see that fish, do not take your eyes off. We can all operate this reel. We can all do this without looking at it. I can turn this around and never have to look down at it. It's just a bad, bad habit to happen every cast. To look down and do this. But say I make a cast, and it might happen to me, it happens to me. You no, 
know, may, I make a cast, I let the cast over there, it lands over here. If I get it back in, and this is the speed I want to get it back in at. If I take my time, if I, if I miss my cast, I, I can just sit back in as fast as I can. But doing this, and then looking back up, that tail might have went down, and now I'm over to go. And he might still be right there, but I just don't see it anymore. Or if I don't have my eye on that fish, that's another, just a little tiny detail that makes a huge difference. When I'm casting, if I miss that cast, when I get it back in, I know that I can just, if I feel, take this bail, rotate it around until I feel it, and I never have to take my eyes off that target. You never, ever want to take your eye off the target once you have it inside. So when I'm going down the flat, always how I am. And I've had many days where I've done that to fish, that were busy tailing, I just put it right down on the nose. The closer they are to the boat, the more aggressive I gotta be, the closer I'm gonna land to. If the fish is that close to me, I'm dropping that thing right there on top of his nose. Most of the time, you know, the, my, by the time they look up and see that bait and take off, I have caught lots and lots of fish, no farther than that. But if that fish is that close to me, I'm not gonna cast down here by this cone and expect by the time I reel it all the way back up here, he hasn't seen me already. Because if he didn't see me yet, the time is really taken. So the farther away they are, the more time I got, the farther away I can cast, the closer they are, the more aggressive I gotta be. But still, when I put it on them, you know, if that fish is there, am I gonna get a bite if I do that on that fish, or am I gonna get a bite for that fish if I'm so doing that on top? Which is what I, obviously, the first one works better, but you, know, you need to be able to you know, flip your bait out underhand like that. You get lots of fish that just a little underhand flip like that, but is that something that you practice and you're pretty sure that you can just drop that thing, or I can drop it two feet past them before I even close that bail. I'm up in the target, take my time, then I'm going to let this thing do what a shrimp does in the water. And if you've never tried it, just take a shrimp, put him in the water, and they'll hook on it, watch what he does. He doesn't zigzag around, he doesn't, you, know, you might see him popping out of the water like this sometimes, or something's really on top of the trying to chase him, but most of the time, that's not what shrimp's doing. Shrimp's down in the grass, you don't see shrimp all day long. But we go over thousands and thousands of them on those flats, but you don't even see where they're there, because they're hiding down the grass. So what I'm, I want to make this thing be like a shrimp, so no matter where that fish is, as soon as I get it in its path, that's all I do with it. And if I don't see him rushing over to it, I'm going to see three things. Either I don't see anything different, which means they didn't see it. They run away because it didn't, something didn't look just right, or they run over and grab it. And if I put this in front of that fish, so here's my fish, and he's moving left to right, and I put it out in front of him, I bring it up to his path, and I let it sink down. That's, that's my action right there. That's what I'm going to hope gets me to bite. And if I don't see that fish speeding up and going towards that thing, and start to dip down like he's going to grab it, I give it one or two twitches to get his attention. Because if he didn't run over to get it, he's probably running away from it. Most of the time, you know, unless you're casting so far away that they just don't know. If you're, if you're out that far away from them, you know, they might not see it, especially if they're sitting still. If you're that far away, that might make a difference between this cast, getting the bite, and the cast that lands over here. You might, be, you might cast right there all day long, and you'll never, ever get a bite if you're only two and a half, two feet away. That's the difference in catching a bunch of fish. This, this, this is the game of inches. I, I call it a game of inches and seconds. The faster you can get it there, the more accurate you can be, the more fish you're going to get. So the plane is simple as that. My question is, I was going to do this seminar, I might go over the practice. What would I start? How would you start to practice? If I was going to practice, I would, the first thing I would look, I would practice is take, when you're practicing, get a target that's small, first of all. And the smaller the target you aim at, if you're, if you're used to practicing and say you had something the size of a dinner plate, and that was your practice target, all of a sudden you saw 10 redfish and they were, in, you know, bigger than a hula hoop, that looks like something gigantic. But if you cast that hula hoop and you need to get it in a spot this big and you're not used to casting a spot that big, so first first thing you want to do is, is aim small. Now, if you got water to practice on, it makes it a heck of a lot easier because you can practice throwing past something and 
getting it up to it real quick where you can't really do that all that great on your grass. But what I can do on my grass is practice you know, where, I, where I land. I can I put a little target out and can I land you know, close to that target? Or can I throw directly over that target and get it off of that target just by raising my rod? Could you, you could put something, a little worm, or you could put something without a hook stick on and in your grass, and you could throw straight over it and lift it up and see if you can get, get that thing into that target. And then the best time to practice, to me, is the days you're not fishing because it's so windy and you decide not to go fishing. Why not go take 10 minutes and see? Because there's going to be plenty of days where you started off the day that was like this, and all of a sudden it's blowing like crazy. You, know, you still want to stay out fishing for drove an hour to get there, but the casting isn't too great in the wind because you only have to practice when it's nice and smooth, and you're not used to you know, using this practice using that finger. That's I don't I don't need to be where fish are to practice being able to use my finger, being able to hit hit my target, uh, being able to cast backhand and. There is no, the rod, work, the rod doesn't care whether it's pointing this way, whether it's pointing this way, whether it's completely upside down. The rod will do the same thing. It's all about how we move that rod. And, but for casting up here, you don't have to really worry about being left or right. I mean, I can throw with a straight line. It might not go, I might not have great control whether it arcs or whether it goes straight. I mean, uh, in a straight line, Level, but I can throw, you know, if I'm aimed right over that that thing, I can throw straight over that. But I'm driving that lure down in the water. If I'm throwing sidearm, my wrist does the same thing. My hands do the same thing here as they do here. There's no difference in what this rod is doing. It's just pointing in a different direction. But there's a different release point when I come sidearm. If I'm not used to throwing sidearm, I need to time out when to release that thing off of there. Uh, yeah. A lot of times I've been throwing the low side arm so that lure is barely, barely above the surface of the water. But when I try to, when I'm throwing a fish, I try to keep that thing as low to that surface as I can to eliminate the wind on effect on the lure, the wind effect on my line. So I'm throwing as straight a line as I can, as low to the water as I can. Yep. Um, yeah. So the shrimp, you know, pretty simple. I show you what I do with the shrimp. I do almost the same thing with that little lead-headed jig. So with this suit, instead of me tying it on there that I got it on, it's gonna be almost exactly the same. If I'm throwing that lead-headed jig out there, I get it up to where that fish is, and boom, that thing rockets down at the bottom of the front, just like the shrimp and crab. I plastic crab, it's the same exact thing. I get it up in front of them, I let it sink on down. I don't have to, I don't have to give it, there's, there's not really a, a action a uh, way that I need to do because it does what it needs to do all by itself just by me letting it go and sit down the bottom. And that's what those fish are expecting to see. And that's what I want to do for them. Anybody have any questions? So the other thing that this finger, you know, the finger not only does it help me yank this line tight so that I can do this and get this thing up there and keep my lure always moving where the wind doesn't get a hold of it. But that's how I keep, you know, if I do this and I get those two or three extra wraps off, and even if I close this by hand, you can already see there was already a little problem to go up there. That line gets down here because it's all loose and you don't notice it. You make one or two turns and next thing you know, you got one of those funny loops down there. And you cover it all back up and you don't notice it because you're busy looking at the fish and you're going to make your next cast and it gets to that funny spot and that's when that big mess comes off this floor. Uh, it's because there was a little bit of slack in, that, in your system somewhere to catch the cork. But if you get in the habit of popping that finger on there every time, you will always see that line tight. I had a guy today, and there were two guys, but one guy, I mean, he must have had to do this. 20 times they unwrap his tip. Unwrap his tip. The only way, and they were doing a lot of blind casts. They had a jig on, popping a couple times, they realized this line is really hard to see. But what do I do? 
notice that I'm reeling this thing in, there's no way that that line can be jumping around my tip. This isn't the greatest thing to jig it in, but who gives the idea? When I'm working this thing, there's no possible way that if I do this, switch it up like this, you see every time there's a chance that now I jump around my tip. And now I got to come down and unwrap my tip. But every time I do that, not only does it have a chance to get around my tip, now I'm reeling up slack on my tip. And you do that enough times in the day, and sooner or later you're going to end up with that big mess on your reel. So no matter what I'm using, there's never a chance for me to wrap that tip because I'm always pushing that thing to turn the handle just fast enough so that the line is perfectly tight. That way when the fish bites, I can instantly set that hook. Even when I'm, I'm using it in a little bit deeper water, the trout fish, so I twitch it up a couple times, but as I come down, that line is always tight. Instead of twitching it up, dropping that rod tip, and now not only do I miss the bite, but now but sooner or later I'm going to wrap that tip and I'm reeling up slack. And that's what ends up causing those knots, is reeling this stuff up with no tension on it at all. So the wind doesn't ever cause them, but the windier it is, the easier it is for you to get slack. But it's super easy on a windy day. If I throw this thing out and I got a side wind, there's a huge bow, and it would be nothing for the line to be all the way over at that wall if I just didn't do anything for a second or two. And I didn't keep that lure loop, and then I'm just pulling it slack and not even 